I'm Travis and this is Curious Tangents and society is strange. Bees have beehives and ants have ant colonies, but both of them are pretty rigid. A bee or an ant can't decide tomorrow that they would like to overthrow their queen and establish a democracy. But if you live in a human dictatorship, you could do that. And humans have done it many times. I love dystopia. It's a specific genre of fiction where things have gone horribly wrong. And dystopias usually say something about our world. 1984, I'm sorry it's mirrored, is a critique on totalitarian governments and mass surveillance. For those of you who didn't read it, you should read it. But for those of you who won't, if anyone ever references Big Brother is watching, it's from here. Though this book is fiction, it impacted the world significantly. There have been many things throughout history that were said to separate man from animals. Most of them have been debunked. At first we thought it was tool usage that separated humans from animals because animals can't use tools, except they do. Elephants, fish, birds, dolphins, chimpanzees, just to name a few, all have the ability to use tools. We then said it was language, but almost all animals can use language in some degree or another. Chimpanzees can even mimic and understand thousands of different signs and sign language. Wembley Stadium can seat 90,000 people. It could also theoretically seat 90,000 chimpanzees. Chimpanzees can cooperate with one another in groups of up to 120, which is really impressive. But past that point, it would be complete large scale anarchy. If you put 90,000 human beings in that same place, you get a game of soccer. The reason for this is because we have rules, rules that we made up. It might be the rules of soccer, or it might be the rules of etiquette, being polite, behaving yourself next to your neighbor. All rules that we composed. There's no biological necessity to play that game of soccer, but we can do it. There's no biological necessity to show up peacefully and watch it among 90,000 strangers, yet we gleefully do it. And for those on your side of the game, you may even feel bonded with a facet of human tribalism. And you belong to many tribes, your school, your country, your role in my Discord server, Nerdfighteria. In the words of moral psychologist Jonathan Haidt, we are a groupish bunch. The reason we can cooperate mass scale and chimpanzees cannot is because we have rules and laws and fiction, legal fiction. All of the groups that you belong to probably exist within a hierarchy. My school has rules that fall in line with my state. My state has laws that fall in line with my country. And my country has laws that fall in line with the UN sometimes. The real difference between humans and animals is much deeper than the way that we use our tools. In the words of Yuval Noah Harari, we live in triple layered reality. Chimpanzees have knowledge of themselves, the first layer. They also have knowledge of the world around them, the second layer. The third layer that humans have is fiction or storytelling. I can get along with my coworkers at work without needing to previously know them because we all believe in the same story or in this case, the corporation that we work for. A corporation that is at its core, just a bunch of legal documents. Me and my fellow citizens, or countrymen, as they write in political science textbooks for some reason, can all get along because we have similar etiquette or manners. The system of rules that governs how you interact with other people in public. Me and my fellow man, regardless of if we know each other, both know that we should not attack each other. Not just because it might damage one of us, but because society as a whole would frown on us for fighting. This may seem like common sense. This should seem like common sense to a human. To a chimpanzee, this is not common sense. Two unfamiliar males might tear each other to shreds. This is not to say that humans are entirely peaceful. We are far from it. But we're cooperative enough that we can build society. In fact, this can go even further. This has reached a point where the real world frequently bends to our stories. In the year 1940, the Nazi party invaded France leading to much of the Jewish population attempting to evacuate south to Spain and Portugal, 
which would require a visa. The Portuguese government then forbade the consul to issue visas without prior approval from the foreign ministry. The consul, Aristides de Souza Mendes, would disregard that order. Him and his team would work around the clock for 10 nights and days to issue life-saving visas. He was then escorted home by the Portuguese government and fired. Also entering Portugal would be at least 30,000 refugees. They were accepted not because their government wanted them there. They were accepted because Sousa Mendes issued thousands of life-saving visas. Pieces of paper, legal fictions made to control immigration that are respected more than human life. So it is written and so it was done. If you want to know if something is real, just ask if it can suffer. If the United States and China go to war, the United States nor China will suffer. When Blockbuster Video went underground all those decades ago, Blockbuster Video didn't suffer. The soldiers and the employees, however, can suffer. Companies and countries can't. Companies and countries are just metaphors. And thank you for watching. Hi, so this video was heavily inspired by Sapiens and Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari and The Righteous Mind by moral psychologist Jonathan Haidt. I highly recommend all of these books, links to them in the description, also links to my Patreon and my Discord server, and like and subscribe and all of those things. Thank you for watching.